Honestly, it begins with my wife Carolyn and I raising our son from age four on the films of the Japanese master Hayao Miyazaki. As we watched the hand-drawn magic of Ponyo and My Neighbor Totoro over and over, as you do with a four-year-old, and then graduated through all his films to the more challenging, mature story of Spirited Away, I fell in love with the pure majesty of Miyazaki-san's vision. When the opportunity came up to present the international premiere of what may be his final film, we didn't have to ask me twice. I'm a fan. And you know what? I'm not alone. I want to bring out one of Miyazaki-san's most passionate fans, a legend of a filmmaker in his own right, and the maker of the only Best Picture Oscar winner that was shot right here in Toronto. Please join me in welcoming Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> movie, so here I am. <laughs> he knows what makes my fat butt move. <laughs> here I am. And why, you know, I think Toronto, Canada loves animation. Toronto loves animation. Uh, the ties with animation in this city and this country are deep, strong, and full of love. Uh, G Kids, who distributes the film, loves animation. And, and so do I. And we all believe something we've been repeating over and over again, until they listen to us, animation is film. And tonight's, uh, tonight's film goes beyond that. Animation is art. We are privileged enough to be living in a time where Mozart is composing symphonies, when Van uh, Gogh is painting paintings, uh, because Miyazaki-san is a master of that stature. And we are so lucky to be here uh, it says, you know, it is said that it will be his last film. It really is a matter of celebrating everything he's done so far. He's changed the medium that he uh, started in, revolutionized it, proved over and over again that is a tremendous work of art. I remember uh, an opening, opening passage of James Baldwin where he's talking about uh, seeing the back of John Crawford moving in that passage of a train and how beautiful and how hypnotizing that movement is. And then I think of animation and I think animation doesn't capture that movement, it has to create it. If a blade of grass moves or a drop of rain hits a rock, it is created. It never happened. And the rhythm and the, flu uh, the fluidity, the symphonic nature of animation makes it, in my estimation, one of the highest forms of cinema and one of the ones that comes the closest to coming from the heart and making complete portraiture of its great authors. Miyazaki is no exception. It may be, in my estimation, the greatest director of animation ever. And he has made his films uh, as full of paradox and questions as he is. These are not easy films, but they are films that, are, that portray him so intimately that you feel that you are having a conversation with him. And they are paradoxical because he understands that beauty cannot exist without horror, and uh, delicacy uh, cannot exist without brutality. And he makes amalgams of these things and shows life on the screen in a beautiful way. He repeats motifs over and over again, you know, flying, uh, hope, uh, despair, the power of innocence, the grace of innocence, and uh, each of his parables, because they become parables, are full of uh, belief in humanity and full of heartache for humanity. I believe the film we will watch tonight will be no exception. But I think that uh, the opportunity to see it, and I know we are saying it for the first time outside Japan, this is the first audience to watch this film outside Japan. This is the world Goddamn premiere. <laughs> 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 
さん行きましょう As you join us today, we encourage you to reflect on the land that you're on and its history. We're located on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee. The territory is within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant and is home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We're grateful to work on this land. Good morning and welcome. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Judy Lung and I am Vice President of Public Relations and Communications here at TIFF. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It is such a thrill to be here together with all of you in this magical space to celebrate Canadian film. As I look around the theater, I see an array of incredibly talented storytellers and creatives who have created not only some amazing films that we're going to see this year, but also pathways and opportunities for new, exciting voices to emerge. And I also see a large and very important network of supporters and champions in a variety of roles, including film critics and reporters, publicists, marketers, funders, and programmers, to name but a few. So today, we're proud to celebrate the Canadian film selection at the 2023 Toronto International Film Festival. And in doing so, we also celebrate a thriving and powerful industry, one that I know we're all so proud to be a part of. And now, it's my pleasure to welcome Cameron Bailey, CEO of TIFF, to the stage to say a few words. Thank you, Judy. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thanks so much for coming. It's just so great to see you all here. Uh, this feels like the little sneak preview of the festival buzz before the festival comes to town and all those other people from all over the world descend on our city. We get to come together first, right? Um, so I want to um, I want to just, first of all, thank all of you. And especially, I see a lot of familiar faces. Here's some of you in this room I have been working with in various capacities for about 30 years, maybe. Some are new colleagues and friends. I'm glad to see all of you here. This is the 48th edition of TIFF, and it promises to be a thrilling one. Some of the thrills were not planned, I'm going to say that, because uh, we do have some unique challenges this year. But we've got a stellar lineup of films uh, programmed, including and especially the ones we're going to be talking about today. This is going to be a memorable, exceptional celebration of Canadian and global cinema. I want to thank you for your support 
over the years, and especially these last few years, it's always been interesting. Every single year for the last uh, three years, roughly, has been very interesting. Um, so thanks for your support during that. Uh, this organization has grown and evolved in ways we could not ever have imagined, and its continued success is due in large part to you, to the people in this room, our local community. As I look through the schedule and out across this room, I'm taken aback by how far we've come as an industry. I first entered this industry as a student reporter uh, in 1987, uh, covering the festival. TIFF is many things to many people at its core. It's not only a showcase and a celebration of Canadian cinema, but a fundamental part of the talent pipeline as well. We consider ourselves to have a, a massive responsibility that we honor and we respect, not only on days like today or the 11 days during the festival, but all year round. Of course, we can't do it alone, and we do this in partnership with all of you, so thank you. As well, I also want to take a moment to thank our major industry supporters, Ontario Creates and Telefilm Canada, for their continued support of our festival initiatives uh, every single year. We look forward to continuing that work with all of you during what promises to be an exciting year ahead. And a special thank you also to those who help us do what we do at TIFF, our members and our donors. Uh, we need your support. We're grateful for your support. And uh, we do this work with your support. Thanks also to our lead sponsor, Bell, and our major sponsors, RBC, Visa, and Bulgari, and of course, our major public supporters, the Government of Ontario, Telephone Canada, and the City of Toronto. Now, before I turn things over to our Chief Programming Officer, Anita Lee, I want to share some news uh, about an exciting addition to the Lightbox. Uh, we continue to look for opportunities to uh, expand what we can offer to moviegoers and uh, all of the, the film community in the city, and also just to enhance the experience. The building is now almost 13 years old, and we've been thinking and dreaming for a while about how we could refresh at least a part of it. So with that in mind, this fall we're going to be opening a new cafe bar upstairs on the third floor of Tiff Bell Lightbox. It's going to be a new destination on King Street West and a place to gather for chat, for conversations, maybe before or after a film. Or even if you're not seeing a film, I think you're going to find it a cool place to, to meet friends for coffee, real coffee, cocktails, real cocktails, uh, all the way through the day and into the evening as well. So I'm excited to officially announce here the name of this space, which is not something we took lightly. In reimagining this third floor, we looked to a legendary filmmaker and someone who became a friend uh, uh, to me over the last years of her life for inspiration, Agnes Varda. Her spirit of creativity and exploration informed not just the look and feel of the space, but the atmosphere and the energy that we wanted it to provide. Just as Agnes Varda's films captured the essence of life and, and curiosity about other human beings, our cafe aspires to be a place where people can come together, share stories, and make meaningful connections. And so it became obvious that the new cafe bar on the third floor could have only one name. We're going to call it Varda. You will be able to get to know Varda soon. Uh, it will open officially to the public on October 6th, but before that, Varda will be open during the festival for members and festival guests to experience the space and all that it has to offer first. And we will catch up uh, with you on more details shortly. I can't wait for you to see and to experience the space and to maybe run into you there someday having one of those uh, real coffees or real cocktails. And now I want to welcome our Chief Programming Officer to the stage. Please join me in welcoming Anita Lee. Good morning. So excited to be here. So, so pleased to see everyone today. As you all know, TIFF serves as a crucial platform for showcasing Canadian cinema to both domestic and international audiences worldwide. Canadian films featured at the festival hold a distinct position, fostering a sense of cultural identity, artistic expression, and creative power as a nation. We also strive to support the Canadian industry to provide Canadian filmmakers with a unique opportunity to connect with industry leaders, distributors, and audiences from around the world. 
We are proud through TIFF's Talent Labs and Industry Conference to support Canadian filmmakers through the festival and year round. This year, we have added a new Canadian award, the Amplify Canada Goose Trailblazer Award for a Canadian BIPOC producer who has made a difference in the Canadian industry. Yes. <laughs> the inclusion and positioning of Canadian films at TIFF not only celebrate the diversity of narratives and perspectives that are unique to who we are, but also bolsters a key creative and cultural exchange with the international community. It enhances Canada's reputation as a vibrant hub of cinematic talent. This year, we are very excited to launch the inaugural CJ Entertainment Kofik and TIFF K-Story Fund, a $30,000 development fund for three feature films by Korean Canadian and Korean American creators. Before I welcome Robin Citizen, Director of Programming for Festival and Cinematech, and our Canadian Features programmers, Norm Wilner and Kelly Busalis, let's have a quick look at some of this year's titles. I did that movie, it came out and made me into a star. I don't know where it would be without that movie. Yes, super exciting. We are very, very excited to present an incredible lineup of 50 Canadian titles in the festival this year. Woo! Those are 21 feature films, 20 short films, six documentaries, and three series. Yes. Canadian films are programmed in all our sections of the festival, from galas to docs to shortcuts, by TIFF's dedicated team of programmers. We are thrilled to see Canadian films increasingly present across all our sections, including galas, special presentations, and platform. This is a testament to the flourishing of Canadian talent and storytellers, and we are proud at TIFF to play a pivotal role. So, to kick things off, I'll be announcing our galas and special presentations. Our galas and special presentations, along with the Canadian programmers, are programmed by Cameron Bailey and our secret weapon, Jane Shoto. Okay, so we have Solo by Sophie Dupuis. <laughs> Swan Song, Chelsea McMullen. Hey to Love, Nickelback, Lee Brooks. In our special presentations, Close to You, Dominic Savage. Days of Happiness, Chloe Robichaud. Rue, Charles Olivier Michaud. Seven Veils, Atom Ogoen. We are also very proud to present a very special classic restoration supported by Telefilm, written and directed by Bridget Berman, Artie Shaw, Time Is All You've Got, the winner of the Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature in 1985. I would like to now invite Robin Citizen to announce our platform and centerpiece. Thank you, Anita, and hello. 
It was my pleasure to oversee and lead the selection of this year's platform section, TIFF's competitive international program spotlighting director-led visionary cinema. Last year, the winner was a Canadian film, Rice Boy Sleeps. And this year, we're excited to have another Canadian film in competition, The King Tide by Christian Sparks. <laughs> From our centerpiece section, we have Fitting In by Molly McGlynn. Hey Victor by Cody Lightning. Strong contender for best title of the festival, humanist vampire seeking consenting suicidal person by Ariane Luises. In Flames by Zara Khan. Irena's Vow by Louise Archambault. Carnival by Henri Pardo. And The Nature of Love by Monia Chokri. I would now like to invite Norm Wilner to announce titles in the Docs, Discovery, Wavelengths, and Primetime programs. This is still so weird. Um, I, 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 I will read from the script, but before we do that, I want to uh, acknowledge two people uh, without whom. Uh, first is Steve Gravestock, who did this job for many, many years and who is here today. And the other is Ravi Srinivasanan, who is not. Um, he should be. And it's a privilege to do it instead, unfortunately. Uh, I am, however, thrilled to announce Canadian titles across these four very distinct programs, and I would like to acknowledge the section leads for Docs, Tom Powers, Discovery, Dorota Lech, Wavelengths, Andrea Picard, and for Primetime, Jeff McNaughton. Uh, Kelly Woodsells will be coming up in a moment. Uh, documentaries. We have Boil Alert, directed by James Burns and Stevie Salas. Uh, I Am Sirat, directed by Deepa Mehta and Sirat Taneja. <laughs> Mr. Dress Up, The Magic of Make Believe, directed by Robert McCollum. <laughs> and Summer Camp, directed by Jen Markowitz. <laughs> In Discovery, and please pay attention to these because they're exciting. Backspot, directed by D.W. Watterson. <laughs> yeah. I Don't Know Who You Are, directed by M.H. Murray, and yeah. <laughs> Seagrass, directed by Meredith Hama Brown. <laughs> Tatuktavuk, What We See, directed by Carol Kunuk and Lucy Tulakardjuk. <laughs> and The Queen of My Dreams, directed by Fauzia Mirza. They're all great. Meet the filmmakers, see the movies. In Wavelengths, we have He Thought He Died from Isaiah Medina. <laughs> Mamzelle Kinopsia from Denis Cote. And a 3D wavelength short from Blake Williams' Labyrinth Sequences. And finally, the primetime series we have from Canada, Black Life, Untold Stories, <laughs> episodes directed by, sorry, uh, Bria Mack Gets a Life, <laughs> and Telling Our Story. <laughs> I'd now like to invite Kelly Butsalis to, to announce the short film, uh, Short Cuts program. Hello. Shortcuts is TIFF's short film sec so, <clears throat> excuse me, section reflecting the best short films from around the world and programmed by Jason Anderson. Canadian short films have always had a strong presence in shortcuts and is often the launch pad for Canadian filmmakers. Canadian titles selected this year are 
Six Minutes Per Kilometer by Catherine Bovin. Aftercare by Anuba Momin. All the Days of May by Miriam Charles. Aphasia by Marielle Delpe. Begal Noor, Lake Begal by Alisi Telangut. Bloom by Casey Lum. Express by Ivan D. Osa. Gabby's Hills by Zoe Pelchat. I Used to Live There by Ryan McKenna. Making Babies by Eric Boulian. Meteor by Atefa K. Kademol Reza. Modern Goose by Karsten Wall. <laughs> Motherland by Jasmine Mozafari. <laughs> Mothers and Monsters by Edith Yorish. <laughs> Red Lights by Eva Thomas. <laughs> Sawo Matang by Andrea Nirmala Wijajanto. The Skates by Halumi Oradiri. Sorry. <laughs> this is Not About Swimming by Marnie Van Dyke. <laughs> and Shia Shia Ali by James Michael Chiang. <laughs> Thank you, Anita. Hey. Uh, thank you, Robin, Norm, and Kelly. Uh, before I wrap up, I'd like to take a moment to introduce and acknowledge this year's programming team. Uh, I think you're all in the front row. Please stand up as I call your names. Uh, I believe uh, Jeff Minnochton, our international programmer, Prime Time. Yes, please stand up. Uh, and Jane Shuttle, our senior programmer, special presentation. Yes. Jason Anderson, international programmer and shortcuts. Okay. Um, Norm, of course, who you've just met. And I've got checks beside who you who is here, but in case anybody is missed. Can you please just raise your hand? Because I thought I saw a few others. Am I wrong? Uh, Diana here. Oh, Diana, you're there. Diana Kadaviv, international programmer. Did I feel like I saw a couple of others? No? Uh, Jane Kim, uh, industry producer. Uh, Christoph. Is he here? Yes, Christoph, our ICW producer. Anybody else? OK, we're covered. Thank you so much. We are so thrilled. A big round of applause for all the films and the filmmakers in this year's festival. Well, thank you again for joining us today. As is tradition in a moment, we're gonna ask that all film teams, actors, directors, etc., come to the stage for a group photo. But before that, in closing, I just wanna extend a huge thank you to the teams at TIFF who put on this incredible event, namely communications team, who I feel is all over there somewhere, as well as our as well as our amazing event production team here at TIFF. Let's keep this energy and momentum up. We will see you all in September. Thank you. Thank you.